Finally, after days of confusion and doubt. Okay, it's coming up on your port side. 10 degrees to the port. Repeated analysis and recalculation of sonar and navigation data. Another 5 degrees port, still 50 feet out. Now, at last, the coordinates for the elusive Target 71 begin to line up with video from the bottom. 080, dead ahead. Dead ahead. Liberty Bell 7. next thing is uh, I want to touch it. <laughs> Seeing is one thing, but touching is another. So hope they bring it up pretty soon. They keep gets our hand on. It looks in pretty good shape. Even the telescope looks pretty good. Where were you when you last touched it? Now about uh, 55 minutes before liftoff. That's when we were ready to go. Oh, now that's a good view. Okay, now this thing, yeah. All right. See, this is the thing we need to get out of. That's the old snap hook. See the snap, recovery line. The next thing I want to do is grab that hook again. <laughs> Last time we touched it was pre-flight, about 30 minutes before it went down. Well, that's a good picture. What a shot. Kurt has built three special clamps that must be fitted onto the capsule's top ring. The operation calls for a delicate touch, like doing surgery by remote control on a patient miles away. Get just four of those structures right there. That's a good spot. Maybe bring it back towards you a little bit, but don't do anything. Right, that's yeah, perfect. Man. Right? Oh, damn. Just good. Right there. Right there. Say when. Okay, start turning. Turning. One false move in the arm of the ROV could punch right through Liberty Bell's hull. Okay, don't go too okay. far. Don't go too far, or just go on around again. Okay. Let's try again. We've got to check it, make sure it's alive, but it looks pretty good. And it's in the right position around the top. <coughs> it's, it's just try and do it nice and easy. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Come back a little bit. See, so you're rotating well, around here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that looks more. beautiful. Though. A little bit more, it's got to go a little more. Oh, that's, that's, good. that's even better right there. Jeez, why is so turn. slow? It's about 2,000 it's, turns lock to lock. I'll never do this. I'll die first. It's side loaded. That's why it's turning like I'll that. I'll die first. Well, I... Nothing, nothing you can do about it, man. You're doing all right. You're doing, doing the best job. you can. Great job. You're doing good. There's another 150 more like that, and we'll be set. The clamps mate perfectly with Liberty Bell's top ring but joints weakened by 38 years soaking in salt water could shear away, leaving Kurt with nothing but the top ring. Before latching on the recovery line, Steve and Rich must link up a three-point harness. 
If they succeed in hauling up the capsule, there's still one last and potentially deadly challenge. The escape hatch wasn't the only explosive device on Grissom's capsule. Liberty Bell 7 was also carrying a bomb. Long before Grissom's mission, NASA engineers had planned for the possibility of losing a capsule at sea. Each Mercury spacecraft was armed with a depth charge, a so far bomb designed to detonate deep underwater and blast the sonic beacon to help locate a sunken capsule. Right here, there is this partition right. going up. Liberty Bell's undamaged hull means the SOFAR bomb has never exploded. This is uh, one pound of HBX, probably in a heavy stainless steel case, which um, would be about the equivalent of 16 hand grenades going off at the same time. There Sam Benefield thought it was in this area, somewhere yeah. around the perimeter. Yeah. Um, that would put it uh, around here somewhere. I mean, above... Above the pressure hull. Oh, like you see there, below up, the uh, parachute be, can. Be up in here, there's a forward pressure vessel. But not necessarily against the outside bulkhead. No. Hugh Cease is a specialist from UXB International. His job, getting rid of bombs. The uh, explosive exclusion area for this device is about 900 feet. And we've got 184 feet on this vessel, some of which we're using. So there is no way to get out of the exclusion area for this uh, amount of explosives. If it goes off, it'll punch pieces of shrapnel through the capsule and through those connex boxes back there. So we need at least a quarter inch steel between the people who are on the ship and the people who are in the back doing the work for frag protection. We're gonna stand by during step one. We're gonna let you strap it down. I hate to say it, but if somebody gets hurt, you don't want us to get hurt while it's being strapped down because then we wouldn't be any good for the step that you really need us. <laughs> yeah, that would be removing the shrapnel after it's going off. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> um, That's what the coroner does. Even after 38 years, Liberty Bell could still be a death trap. In the control van, Kurt oversees the ROV's last act, hooking on the recovery line. You're golden, Steve. What? You're golden. So Just hope it hangs together on the way up. Soon they will learn if the top ring can still bear the weight of the capsule. To unreal the recovery line, the ROV and its cameras must be hauled to the surface, out of the way, leaving Liberty Bell on the bottom alone and out of sight. Now we pray. Yes, we do. Yeah, see now what we, we see. We've, seen, we've gone fishing, now we're gonna see what we caught. That's right. We've hooked the big one, now all we have to do is land. Yeah. Preparations are complete. The rest is up to fate. <laughs> 